Hey there, it's David Williams and today's topic is BJT switch circuits. And a BJT switch circuit is, is pretty much the simplest bipolar junction transistor application you can have. In today's video we're going to look at some general concepts of what uh, a BJT switch is and do some circuit analysis to make sure that the B, a BJT switch circuit is actually operating in the uh, proper operating region. In other words, is it, is it biased to the, to the proper into the proper operating conditions. And then finally, we'll look at a simple circuit design uh, application and make sure that we design the switch, make sure we, we have the proper resistor values to put the switch into the proper operating regions. Now, a, a switch circuit, the simplest switch circuit that you could, you could have would simply be you got some kind of power supply, you got some kind of load whatever that happens to be, and then you just have this switch. And the simplest one is just going to be a mechanical switch. You open and close it. Now this load could be a motor, it could be a light, it could be you know, anything that's, that you want to turn on and off. And it's going to be off. We'll have no current flowing through if the switch is open, but if we close that switch, connect the circuit, current's going to be flowing through it. Now if, you, if your application is, is good enough or uh, suitable enough to to use a mechanical switch then then use a mechanical switch uh, simple examples of that would be a, a light switch you've got a mechanical switch switch it up light goes on switch it down light goes off but there's lots of times where you want to have electronic control over your application so you want to be able to turn your circuit whatever this load is on and off electronically for example we might have some kind of microcontroller here and this microcontroller we need it to turn a switch say a motor on and off well oftentimes a microcontroller is well, a microcontroller the, the output pins on the microcontroller are only going to be able to output a certain amount of current and that current's going to be limited for example uh, the atmega 328 can only drive 40 milliamps on each one, each one of its pins so if you have this application let's say we've got this whatever this load over here, say this is a motor over here that requires 400 milliamps to go through it to turn it on, you're not going to be able to just output 5 volts from this microcontroller, apply it to the motor and, and, and have it turn on. What you're going to need to do is connect it to a BJT switch circuit like this one. Connect to VCC over here, an output pin is going to the base and then that base current is going to turn a collector current on and that collector current is going to be many times greater than that base current and and so as long as this VCC whatever this voltage source is can drive 400 milliamps of current you will be able to turn to turn that load on now a microcontroller like the Atmega 328 typical outputs is either going to be able to output 0 volts or 5 volts so if if V out is equal to zero volts, you know we've got zero volts applied here. That base emitter junction is not going to be forward biased. You'll have zero volts on this side, zero volts on this side. So I B will be zero amps, and therefore your I C is equal to zero amps also. So the output zero volts to this particular transistor. Let me move this out of the way. Don't need to see that. Um, output. Zero, five volt, uh, zero volts from the microcontroller, this load will not be turned on. However, if V out is equal to 5 volts, 5 volts, 5 volts applied here, IB will be something greater than 0, IC will be something much greater than 0 amps, and our switch will be turned on. Our, cir our circuit, our switch is on. Our circuit will be turned on. This load will be will be activated. Um, an alternative configuration. This is with a, this is a configuration with an NPN transistor, where zero volts turns it off, five volts turns it off, turns it on. We could also use a, a PNP transistor. Connected to our load, a ground connected load here. Now, in this case, because we have a PNP transistor, everything's going to be opposite. If our V out 
is equal to zero volts. So we've got zero volts over here. Uh, we'll have something a bit higher than zero volts over on this side. Actually, we've got a base emitter junction is going to be forward bias, so we'll have 0.7 volts less, about 0.7 volts less than VCC. So our RB will have current going through it, and it's going to be our microcontroller will act as a current sink in this case. So if V is equal to zero volts, IB will be something greater than zero amps, and IC will be much greater than zero amps, and therefore you know, IC going through here, our load will be turned on. Now if V out is equal to 5 volts, and let's just uh, make the assumption here that VCC was 5 volts, we would need it to be 5 volts for this, for this particular circuit to work. If V out is 5 volts, we have 5 volts over here, 5 volts from VCC, well that base emitter junction is not going to be forward biased. So the base current is going to be 0, the collector current will also then be 0, and the load will not be turned on. There will be no current going through it, so it will not be activated. Now let's look at the operating region for a, tra a transistor and, and what operating regions we need to be in for it to be working as a switch. A switch is just going to be, there's two states that it's going to be in. It's either going to be conducting current or not conducting current. So when it's conducting, when it's not conducting current, let's look at that case first, that's when the collector current is equal to zero, so we will be in, in cutoff. And we can designate that VCE off. It's going to be somewhere along this line here, but the important thing to note is that anywhere along that line, collector current is zero, so the load will, be having no, will have no current going through it. And the other extreme is when the VCE is close to zero volts, and this is a saturation. So we're going to have some current, some amount of, of saturation current, call that IC sat, that falls somewhere along along uh, somewhere somewhere here somewhere in here. We have some some amount of collector current, but we have almost zero collector emitter voltage. So, so basically, in that region, you know, in in, in this region here, we're going to be in in saturation. So we're either in saturation or we are in cutoff for a particular transistor. Um, now it's easy to verify if you're in cutoff. You know, you just have have no forward bias point, base emitter junction, no current any anywhere. But saturation. We want to make sure we're in saturation and we're not in the active region. I mean, we'll still have current flowing when we're in the active region, but we'll have a varying uh, amount of current if we vary the, vary the base current. Um, saturation is when we're at the peak amount of of, of uh, collector current for a particular circuit. So to do that, to to uh, just highlight that, we're going to look at a particular circuit here, particular switch circuit, and then we're going to check to make sure that we are in the saturation region. So we've got some kind of load here. We've got a 10 volt VCC. We've got a V in that switches between a V in that switches between 0 volts and 10 volts. And for this particular transistor, um, from looking at the characteristic curve, we've got a beta of about 100. Of course, it varies a little bit, but we're going to use use a value of 100. So when V in is equal to zero volts, that base emitter junction is not forward biased. So we will have zero base current, zero collector current, and since we have zero collector current, we're going to call this our V out. That point there. At the at right at the collector, V out will simply be equal to 10 volts because you have no collector current, so no voltage drop across this load, so collector collector voltage will be the same as your source voltage. Now, if V in is equal to 10 volts, I guess I should put in an RB value here. We've got 100 100,000 ohms. IB is equal to 10 volts because we have 10 volts on one side of it. We're going to have 10 volts over here. And that base emitter junction, the emitter's at 0 volts. Base emitter junction, when it's forward bias, is going to be at about 0.7 volts. So we'll have 10 volts minus 0.7 volts over the 100,000 ohms gives us a base current of 
93 microamps. Now the, the purpose of doing this is to, to see if the collector current, or see if the, the, the transistor is actually in the saturation region. And, and so we're going to start off with the assumption that yes, it is in the saturation region. So we're going to calculate what IC is if, when it's in the saturation region. Now to calculate IC, we need to know what value that load is. So let's say the load is 5 kilo ohms. So IC is going to be the voltage across that load. We have 10 volts on this side of it, and we have about, depending on what the collector emitter saturation voltage is, let's make the assumption that the VCE is actually 0 volts. So we'll have 0 volts at the collector, 10 volts from the source. So that means IC will be 10 volts minus 0, or just 10 volts over 5 kilo ohms which is 2 milliamps. Now this was assuming we're in the sat in saturation. So to make sure that we're in saturation, we have to make we have to see is IB greater than IC over beta. Because in the active region IB is equal to IC over beta or in other words IC is equal to beta IB, more common form you've seen it in. But to be in saturation, we want, we're want we at the maximum IC can be, even though we've been increasing IB. So we're increasing IB just to push it, make sure that we're well into saturation. So we've got IB of 93 milliamps, no, microamps. 93 microamps. Is that greater than 2 milliamps over beta, which is 100? And 2 milliamps over 100 gives us 20 microamps. So yes, 93 microamps is greater than 20 micro is greater than 20 microamps. So yes, we are in saturation. So this this circuit does work. Now finally, I want to do a design problem here. Let's say we've got our at mega 328 that can only output 40 milliamps from each one of its pins. But we're going to be using it to drive a motor, a little DC motor, connected up here, driven by a 10 volt source. And this motor, to turn it on, it needs 400 milliamps. And the app mega is either going to output 0 volts or 5 volts. And 0 volts, uh, as we've gone through before, the, it's going to make this transistor be turned off, so the motor is going to be off. But what we want to do um, for this design, I guess two things we want to do. First of all, we want to find a transistor that's going to allow 400 milliamps to go through it. So we probably need some some kind of small power transistor. It's going to let 400 milliamps go through it. And then secondly, let's assume we found that transistor. We want to figure out what value of RB is going to make sure that when 5 volts comes from the Atmega 328, that this transistor is pushed into saturation. So to get that RB value, we're going to start with the fact that IB has to be much greater than IC over beta. So we've picked this transistor, and we've looked up what the transistor beta value is. Let's say it's 125. So we need, we need to pick an IB that's much greater than 400 milliamps over 125. So IB needs to be greater than IB needs to be greater than 3.2 milliamps but how much greater than 3.2 milliamps well I guess a good rule of thumb is some somewhere between 5 or 10 times greater than 3.2 milliamps so we're going to choose IB equal to 5 times this IC over beta 5 times 3.2 milliamps which equals 16 milliamps. And we also know IB, which is 16 milliamps, is equal to 5 volts from the at mega 328, 0.7 volts at the base due to the base emitter junction. So we'll have 5 volts minus 0.7 volts over what RB we're using, or we're trying to figure out what RB is. Rearrange that. And we get RB is equal to 4.3 volts over uh, 16 milliamps. And that works out to 
268.75 ohms. You're not going to find a resistor that's 268.75 ohms, but if you choose something a little bit less than that, then you're going to ensure that your base current is more than five times the collector current divided by beta. And this, this ensures that when the switch is on, it's actually in the saturation region and not in the active region. Now hopefully this gives you some good info of what a BJT switch circuit is, in general how they work, how to verify that your BJT is actually in the saturation region when it's turned on, and also how to design a circuit to make sure that it is in the saturation region when, it, when it's turned on. And I will see you in the next video.